Today we're stepping back to the old school with a throwback amp dyno test. But first we have to get it unwrapped from Saran or Glad or Cling Wrap, whatever it is, to find out what it is. And here we have it. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Soundstream Blue Amplifier, the reference Class A 3.0. You guys know me, we're going to go back and pull out a 1993 Soundstream brochure. This was the introduction of the reference series. And yeah, these were drool-worthy amps for me back in the day. We had the reference 200, 300, 500. And then we also had the Class A 3.0, 6.0, and a couple other different amps. But for today, we're going to focus on the Class A 3.0. Let's look at the Car Audio and Electronics directory for 1993. April edition, listed with amplifiers in the Soundstream section, reference Class A 3.0, $429 in 1993, equates to around $900 in 2023. Soundstream received a lot of accolades for the reference as well as the Class A series amps back in these times, and we've tested the reference 300 as well as the reference 500 in previous videos, so make sure you check links in the video description if you want to catch up on those. And here we have the reference Class A 3.0 by Soundstream, again from 1993. This is an excellent version of one. Received one of these from the Amp Guru a few years ago. This one's in near mint condition. Super nice. You can see here, silk screening on the outside. It's a really cool blue hammered finish. Not sure if it's powder coated or what, but it's very cool. Now back in the day, Soundstream was one of the first amps to have these insert terminals, and man, this amp is the epitome of simple connections and very easy connections. I love the way it works. Here on the left, you can see Handcrafted USA has fault, high power, and high current LEDs, as well as a 30 amp ATC fuse. The power and ground terminals accept four gauge bare wire, Again, these terminals are super slick. I'll show you later how they work. Remote terminal accepts around 12 gauge. Also the speaker terminals is a stereo amp except around eight gauge. We also have a level control from 0.1 to 2.5 volts. Tiffany style RCAs back in the day. Again, these sound streams were known for their quality. There you can see the set screws at the top. Those are gold plated screws which hold the wires into those insert terminals. Here on the bottom, you can see not a whole lot going on. There's a couple different caps for uh, switching modes. We'll get to that here in a little bit. If you take off the cap for the top here, you can see there's three different sections for bridge mono, coherent stereo, and mix mono. There is the description of each one. You can pause it if you want to read it. Basically, the coherent stereo is supposed to be the best sound quality one. And at the bottom, we have a switch for high current and high power. Now, why would you want to switch for that? Well, essentially sets the rail voltage so that you can do extremely low ohm testing and we will do that in this video. Ratings for the amp include 25 by two at four ohms, 50 by two at two ohms, 100 by two at one ohm, or 150 by two at half ohm stereo. Bridge ratings are also there, that's the high power mode. Here's the insert terminals and how easy they work. Again, amps these days need terminals like this. Super, super slick, it just looks Amazing when this amplifier is hooked up. All that said, I haven't powered it up yet. Let's see if it works. Fingers crossed she doesn't blow. It's powered up. There you go. High power mode. Now we have the amp hooked up to the amp dyno. We're going to do the stereo test first at four ohms. Use the one kilohertz track. It is in coherent stereo mode. Here we go. Certified test first rated 25 by two. We get 60 watts by two at 14.4. Now the amp is rated at 12 volts and we're closer to 14.4. So there is gonna be some difference here. Uncertified up to clipping, we get exactly the same that we got on the certified test. What about dynamic? Our voltage is gonna be a little bit stronger here for the dynamic test, but we still got over 60 watts, almost 70 watts per channel at 14.59. Now, what about the efficiency? Of course, it is a class AB amp, 55%. They call it class A, but it's really just biased high and it's not a class A amplifier, it's class AB. Anyway, certified at two ohms, we get right at 90 watts per channel. Again, it's rated 50 watts per channel. 
uh, at that 12 volt uh, voltage. So let's try uncertified. And once again, we get right about the same, right about 90 watts per channel at 14.2. What about dynamically? Can we bust 100 watts? Yes! Quite a bit over 100. 113, 121 at 14 and a half. Now let's check out the efficiency at two ohm stereo, right at 50% or so. Again, don't expect much from these old school amps. Now what about one ohm certified? This amp's actually rated down to half ohm certified, but we'll do one ohm here. A little over 100 watts per channel at one kilohertz. Now what about uncertified up to the clipping point? If it's like it was before, virtually the same. Yep, pretty much the same. Average about 106 or so watts per channel. Dynamically, this amp kind of shines a little bit. It, um, yeah, <laughs> it got a little bit of juice. You can see it. We're getting close to 200. 171 and 194 at 14.3. Efficiency's dropping even more though. 40% at one ohm stereo. All right, so I have the amp in the bridge mode. You can see it's still in high power. I am using the two outer speaker leads, which are correct, but I'm not getting any output uh, on the dyno. And I think what it is is the switch that's on the back of the amp. I'm gonna have to um, lube it up some with a little bit of the good stuff. So let's do that and see if it works. Okay, I have disconnected power to the amplifier. I'm gonna remove the bottom panel here. And here's the switch. We'll go ahead and get it lubed pretty good on the top. And all around. Work it in. We'll flip it back over and see if that actually did it. Turns out it wasn't the switch at all, it was just the level control. So I had to adjust it a little bit, give it a little bit of deoxid, and then we're back in business. So let's do the bridge test. All right, first up with a bridge test, four ohm certified. We're using the 40 Hertz track here. It's rated 100 Watts. We get 139, 14.6. The voltage is a little bit higher there. Let's try uncertified up to clipping. Again, 40 Hertz track instead of one kilohertz and 156 at 14.28. What about dynamically at four ohms? We figured if you're gonna bridge the amp, you're probably gonna use it with subwoofers. That's why we're using the 40 Hertz track here. Uh, 171, 14.38. Let's check the efficiency. Four ohms bridged, 44%. Woo! Yes, sir. Not the most efficient amp. Uh, let's try two ohms now. This is bridge, certified 40 hertz, 192. It's rated 200 at 12 volts. So it's actually came up just a little bit shy. Uncertified up to clipping though, we get that 200 plus a little more. 232 at 13.97. Then we'll set it for the dynamic. And this amp seems to shine a little bit dynamically, at least as far as the numbers go. Again, it's not much difference in decibel watts, but uh, just watching the numbers count up is pretty exciting. 281, 14.36, but yeah, that efficiency is struggling. 36%, yo. Now we're gonna do the one ohm mono test, which is half ohm per channel stereo. It's rated right at 300 watts. We got 167 at 13.97. This is a 30 year old amplifier. I don't know if we can give it a pass or not, but anyway, uncertified to clipping. We got a little closer, 228. 13.74, still as numbers go, quite a bit of ways from 300. Dynamically though, can we get the 300? Yes, we can. You can see 327 watts at 14.44. And efficiency wise, we are definitely riding the struggle bus here. 23% efficient. This is why we don't use extremely low ohms because we're waste a lot of that to heat. Now let's try the one kilohertz tone for comparison certified test first 231 so we're still not getting that 300 watts that it's rated at what about dynamically does it give more power than it gave before oh yes check this out well over 400 watts 
435, 14.15. Now let's check out the results. A couple interesting things to say. Again, the amp is rated at 12 volts. We did provide it quite a bit more than that, but we did meet or exceed rating on all the stereo tests. The mono tests, we met all of them except for two ohms and one ohm mono. If you'd like to see the high current mode results, make sure you leave a comment below and I will do that for you. Now for the sound test, let's try out the sound quality over YouTube with compression. Here we go. Got the ELAC bookshelf speakers hooked up to the Soundstream Reference Class A 3.0. Let's hit it with some Smoke Jacket Blues. Low-end extension with some ice flow. After all the testing, we got all the heat gun, the external heat sink was around 125.5 degrees at the hottest. And then we flipped it over, got out the FLIR. You can see 156, 157 degrees Fahrenheit there. That is a resistor that got so hot. And of course the uh, transformer there also got pretty warm at about the same temperature. So overall, nothing unexpected here. It's just really cool to see this in the Predator fashion. Now you may be asking what's inside or what's inside this old school amp. And as you can see here, just an incredibly beautiful layout from the blue circuit board to the yellow components. We have ultra low ESR capacitance bank. We have 1000 microfarad, 16 volt niche cons for the power supply, 1000 microfarad, 50 volt for the rails. And yes, let's talk about pros and cons of this amplifier. Now you may not be able to tell over video, but the sound quality is amazing. It's 30 years old and still working. The best terminals ever. All connections are on one side, makes it super easy to hook up. Two channel or bridge also has a three channel mode, high power or high current. LEDs show the mode that you're in. And yes, Tiffany blessed us with her RCAs on this amp. Things to consider, class AB or class A, quote, quote, low efficiency. It did below rated at 10 mono. The amp got super hot. Of course, most of that power goes into heat. It is 30 years old, so you might start to have problems and might have to get things replaced on amps like this. Now, Soundstream marketed these amps back in the day as Class A. There's no way Class A for car audio isn't viable because it pulls full power at idle. So these are just really high biased Class AB. They do sound great. It was a little bit of a marketing scheme by Soundstream, but these amps are beautiful. Still working 30 years later. Can't say nothing wrong. Big D, I'm out of here. I know I mentioned it earlier in the video, but if you guys want to see the high current mode of this amp also, and if you want to see 12 volt test, where we run the amp with only 12 volts of input voltage instead of the 14, then leave me a comment below and let me know. I've kind of already done it and I've kind of decided I'm gonna put it on the extras channel, but I'm just curious how many of you guys want to see if this thing can do half an ohm bridged mono. Let me know below, big D out.